A lot of 80-year-old men can't do this. Mike Eckert lives just outside of Fredericksburg. Oh, don't put that on there. <laughs> He's heading down to his creek side to check on one heck of a pesky problem. The best I understand, that don't spread from seeds. It spreads from pieces of it washing out and lodging somewhere and starting to grow again. He's talking about giant reed, or rundo donax, and this cane invader threatens just about every river system in Texas. We're almost the Pernalis. Another half mile, you hit the Pernalis down here. And they've got this stuff in the Pernalis too. But it's spreading pretty quick. And it's all over, everywhere you go, it's there. So it's gonna take a massive effort to ever wipe it out, and I'm not sure they'll ever wipe it out. Aquatic invasive species specialist Monica McGarity and a team of biologists are fighting back. They are using an herbicide that will hopefully kill this introduced invasive weed. Indigenous to the Mediterranean, giant reeds been thriving and spreading across North America since the 1800s. Arundo is a grass, but it's a grass on steroids. It grows 30 to 40 feet tall, huge, dense canes, so dense that wildlife really even can't get through it. And so this is a really aggressive plant and it's important to take equally aggressive action to manage it. The team's top priority, protecting the jewel of the Texas Hill Country, the Pertinalis River. Barrens Creek. Barrens Creek is in the upper Pedernales watershed. We've done an aerial survey looking for this plant, the invasive Arundo, and found that this is really the source, Barrens Creek. It doesn't go farther upstream. And so we're trying to tackle that, working from upstream down. This opens up a little bit back here. Here it grows to nearly 30 feet high. It creates what we call a monoculture. So it just dominates the vegetation, crowds everything else out. small fragment of this plant, just a single node can root and create a new plant. And so when you have a flood that comes through or when someone mows or chops it up, fragments go downstream, that can create new plants and create a whole new problem. Whoop. Yeah, that might be about it. We'll go refill and get back at it. So what does it take to kill this reed? Thoroughly evaluated by the EPA, it's a mix of herbicides that attacks the plant in different ways. What the Roundup's gonna do is it's gonna bake it in the sun, just like if you sprayed Roundup on weeds at the house. This one is clear cast, and this is just another herbicide like Roundup, and it's going to be a more a long-term released herbicide. So we're applying this chemical to each area only once per year and we're applying it as sparingly as we can and trying to ensure that we have as little runoff into the creek as possible. These are approved for use over aquatic habitats and if used responsibly can have very little impact on the environment. Spraying herbicide into a creek sounds alarming, but this ecosystem is closely monitored for any damage. They're breaking, they're breaking, they're breaking. Oh, uh, getting a lot of gravel. Just downstream, aquatic biologists study a section of Barron's Creek that has already been sprayed. They're wanting to see if the aquatic herbicide treatment is having a negative effect on the fish in the invertebrate community. Got a red breast sunfish? We can sane, we can electrofish. Oh, looks like we'll pull a few out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we can get a general idea about the health of the stream based upon the health of the um, fish communities and the invertebrate communities that we're sampling. You got some red breast sunfish, that's mainly what you're seeing. And then, look at that, holy crap! Did you that's see nice. that? Yeah. Dang, look how big that fish is. Got him a meal. That is crazy. Never seen that before. Well, that snake seems happy and healthy, and it appears there are plenty of fish here at the creek. Have a large mouth bag? 169. Gotcha. This biologist wants to make sure some smaller creatures are just as healthy. Invertebrates are really great indicators of water quality because uh, they depend on good water quality to complete their life cycle. Dr. Arches Grubb studies aquatic invertebrates. I primarily focus on the invertebrates, little small critters. You'll see dragonfly larvae, stoneflies, mayflies, just beautiful creatures underwater. 
You might think of some alien creatures, pretty much right on the head. The question here is if the chemical spray has affected the mayfly larva, dragonfly larva, and other microscopic wonders. The fish feed on these bugs, and they are a key component of this ecosystem. The thing with fish is when the water quality recedes, they can actually avoid that bad water area and move further downstream. But the invertebrates, they can't really move. They're not as mobile. And there's a lot of little guys on here. Yeah, let's see if there's anything else on this rock. See those case builders right here? Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of them here, and they build this shell out of sand particles. Oh, oh yeah, that's a horsefly larva. Go ahead and bag them. Beautiful. Got an amphipod. Let me see if I can catch them for you. <laughs> there's a damselfly larva. That one's super small. Oh, this one's a beautiful caddisfly, green one. Dobson fly in. No biting, no biting. So far I got about 85 of them in this jar. Seems like a lot, but there's a lot of dirt also packed in there. While it seems plenty of tiny bugs are still alive after the treatment, the Arundo taking hold has already had an impact. So in a typical creek, you might find a huge diversity of invertebrates. Just from a visual estimate, what I have seen so far is in the Arundo stands, we do find a lot fewer invertebrates. These invertebrates, which are native to this area, are not used to the exotic uh, vegetation. The Arundo tends to take over, and it causes huge changes to the channel shape that can really impact the quality of the habitat, not only on the banks, but then also within the stream or the river itself. They didn't get the chemical back there. Now, as for Mike, he had the aquatic invasive team spray his Arundo outbreak and hopes more folks along the creek will join the fight. What you need to do, really and truly, is have a beer and barbecue, and it'll have the whole town come to it, and everybody know about it. <laughs> These Germans like free beer and barbecue up here. <laughs> here, we want to be as careful as we can of their trees. <laughs> While Barron's Creek looks like it just might win the Arundo battle, to win the war, it's going to take a buy-in from everyone. Lots of landowners are getting involved and taking action to manage Arundo on their creeks and also reaching out to their neighbors and their friends to get more people on board. And by everyone getting involved, we have a really good chance of making a really big difference for the health of the streams in the hill country. This project was funded in part by a grant from the Sport Fish Restoration Program.